Suck on this, Europe! Hello, friends. My name is Brandon Dayton. I am your humble narrator. And this Pokemon Day, we're doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favorite Pokemon. You should see some honorable mentions popping up on your screen right about now. Please remember that this list is completely subjective, so if you do not like my picks or you don't see your favorite Pokemon, uh, you can feel free to leave a comment, but don't expect me to regard it in any way if it is negative. <laughs> I really do love all the Pokemon that have been created thus far, and it was super hard for me to pick only 10, but it had to be done. So let's hop into it. Dayton does top 10 favorite Pokemon. Number 10. To me, rats are furry little balls of joys, and Raticate embodies that exceedingly well. He has tons of tricks up his sleeve, from Sucker Punch, U-Turn, Sword Stance, Flame Wheel. Raticate may seem outclassed by other Guts users who are a bit more bulky or quicker, but I find Raticate to be a relatively early threat in every single game that I come across it. Even Joey uses one, because he knows they are in the top percentage of awesome Pokemon. Raticate's Pokedex entry states that it can chew through concrete walls. Now that is a badass pair of bicuspids. Some might find them a little creepy, but I think they are one of the most adorable things I've stumbled upon in a very long while. I love you, Raticate. Number 9. Have you ever had trouble deciding between whether to get a dog or a tiger? Well, Arcanine just might be the Pokemon for you. This fire-breathing dog is majestic, powerful, glorious in every way possible. It'll even keep you warm at night. Arcanine is the only semi-legendary on this list, and it does hold a special place in my heart. Way back when I started on Red, I was disappointed with my choice of a Squirtle, and a friend of mine offered me a Growlithe in exchange. Obviously, this wasn't a great trade for me, but it turned out to be just fine because Growlithe turned into one of the greatest bros that I have ever known. Once we got to Celadon City, I gave him a Firestone, probably a little too early since he never learned Fire Blast, but definitely Arcanine held his spot on the team all the way through the Elite Four. So props to you, Arcanine. You're definitely deserving of a top 10 spot. Number 8. The number 8 spot goes to Mr. Banana Neck himself. That's right, Tropius. This Pokemon's design is extremely interesting to me. From the giant banana leaves on its back that it uses to fly, from the tiny little grin that it constantly has and I absolutely love, Tropius is a Pokemon that you'd be hard pressed not to completely enjoy. Its Pokedex entry says that it feeds bananas to children from its neck, and it does so without kidnapping them, Drift Blim. While Tropius is not much for combat, unless he gets a couple sword stances up in a trick room, I find him to be an extremely interesting Pokemon, and definitely deserving of a top 10 spot. Number 7. Pig. Monkey. Pokemon. That's right, Primeape is the number 7 spot. I absolutely love this angry little ball of fluff. Look at him! He's ready to kick some ass and take some names, and he'll even look like a cute little powder puff doing it. <laughs> Don't call him that to his face, because he'll get angry and chase you down to your death. Primeape is even pretty viable in combat if you give him a choice scarf as a scout, or a choice band he can break down some walls. Definitely do not underestimate this little pig monkey. I do love Primate. He loves me back. Although in real life, he probably looks a bit more like this. Number six. Many of the Pokemon on this list so far have been boy oriented. Melodic is not such a Pokemon. It was owned by the champion Cynthia. And, uh, I definitely wanted to get one for myself, so in Generation 3 I spent many, many hours looking for a Phoebus, and on top of that, many, many more hours leveling up said Phoebus's beauty in order to get it to evolve into a Melodic. But Melodic is a fantastic wall, it has a mischievous little grin, and a gorgeous long tail. There is nothing not to like about this Pokémon. 
even if it looks a little bit evil. Uh, that's also one of the things that I like. Graceful and evil and lovely. And hell, if it's good enough for Cynthia, then it's good enough for me. Number five. Exactly how many generations have we been waiting for a panda Pokemon? Well, I'll say this. The wait was definitely worth it. Pangoro is an awesome fighting and dark type with great skills such as Scrappy, Mold Breaker, and Iron Fist. I love its design with the little bamboo sticking out of its mouth. It just adds a great touch and a sense of character to this Pokemon. Pangoro is an absolute beast with his attack stat, and if you have any doubts about that, put him in Trick Room. See what happens, because your opponent's really going to get it. <laughs> I love you, Pangoro. Definitely a good way to enter the top five slots. Number four. Oh, fucking Marka! Number four slot goes to goddamn Braviary because he is the goddamn jihad fightingest, barbecue eatingest, greatest Pokemonist, suck on this Europeist, the fucking Braviary! Goddamn! Ah, oh, there's nothing not to like about this Pokemon. Its design is fantastic. It is strong as shit. 123 attack. Whoa! Almost as much as Pangoro. Um, its speed is lackluster, so I do like to throw a choice sc scarf on it. But uh, nobody sees that coming. And Braviary is an eagle eye because he hits his target every single time. Number three. So you're walking through Mount Moon and a flock of Zubat comes and they just want to be your best friend forever. So maybe you take one home, grow it up into a Golbat, and eventually it does become your best friend and loves you forever. And you end up with a fantastic, horrifying, speedy Crobat. This thing has so many options for what it's able to do. You can give it taunt and roost and stall something to death. Or, you can go all out with the Brave Bird and uh, Double Edge Cross Poison. Lots of lots of uh, dangerous attacks for Crobat to learn. And he's definitely a big, big threat with Infiltrator. Put up a, a safeguard to reflect the substitute. Doesn't matter, not to Crobat. He's too fast for that shit. Really, he doesn't even try to hide how badass he is. Just look at his face. He's all like, I'm Batman. Definitely one of my favorite Pokemon. Definitely deserving of the number three spot. Number two. I will not hesitate to say that Kangaskhan is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. The parent Pokemon, always defensive of her young, but also ready for a fight if ever it should find her. The breeding aspect of Pokemon is something that has been increasingly expanded upon in further generations and I like to think that Kangaskhan was the inspiration for most of that, since it is the first Pokemon with a baby. I spent so many hours in the Safari Zone trying to find a Kangaskhan, but I did end up taking it with me through the Elite Four for the first time, so Kangaskhan definitely holds one of the most special places in my heart. And number one. Even before I was aware of the rumors about Cubone being a Kangaskhan baby, I was absolutely head over heels in love with Cubone. From the first time I saw it in the Lavender Tower, I knew I had to have one and rescue it from the fate of its poor mother. After much hunting in the rock tunnel, I did eventually find a Cubone of my very own. I leveled it up and leveled it up some more. Almost 70 levels of pressing B later, I had a level 100 Cubone. It was a glorious thing, taking a level 100 Cubone up against Lance and seeing it waste his Dragonite. I absolutely love Cubone for a variety of reasons. His design is wonderful, his color is great, and ground types are just fantastic. Sometimes we all feel alone. Sometimes maybe we all feel like a Cubone. But as long as I have Cubone by my side, I know that I'm never really alone. So this has been my top 10 favorite Pokemon. I do thank you so much for watching. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. If you would like to see more content like this in the future, please remember to like, comment, and or subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.
Until then, friends. Bye bye! One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.